Hey everyone, Soundwave84 here with another Transformers Earthrise review. In this review, we'll take a look at Leader Class Double Dealer. Now, this video is going to be a little bit longer than probably most of my other review videos, so I'm going to try to put some timestamps down in the uh, description, video description, so you can just jump ahead at certain points when you want to see certain things. I'm going to go a little more in depth with this guy because he is a Leader Class. And I want to show off things that, you know, like his weight, his size, do a lot of comparisons. And he has a more involved transformation going from three different modes and comparing him with G1 and everything. So I'm just letting you know up front that I'm going to try to timestamp stuff down below. Let's go ahead and just take a look at the box first. If you look at the box, you can see I'm already, I've already took the insert out. We're going to look at that as well. And this says Double Dealer on the side. It does have a Decepticon logo down here. But then where does really otherwise classify him as a Decepticon? Boxer inside here has him in his Autobot robot mode. And you flip it around and shows you you got 20 steps to get him from this to this. 37 steps to get him from that into the Hawk. Then turn over here and you got your original you know, Earthrise box art. Your mumbo jumbo on the bottom. And then your obligatory Galvatron uh, floating out in outer space. So that's the box. And let's go ahead and look at the insert you get in the package. So here's the insert with the other piece of the map. I've never covered these map pieces as it didn't really interest me. But people have asked about this online since I've had this figure. And all you do is have this little thing. It shows us up and it is... Caminus? Caminus or Gamimus? That's a C. This that goes with the other. Also inside, you notice it has this symbol here, which is also what you will find on his uh, instructions right here, which is very similar to the symbol that Exhaust has on his chest piece. And so what I'm guessing that must be the mercenary symbol. I called it Man with Beard or Robot with Beard in his exhaust review that must be maybe the symbol for mercenary as it seems to be sort of a mix a decepticon autobot look i don't know this is the instructions a lot thicker than more than the paper actually feels a little more sturdy than previous releases all right let's head on on the figure and um, real quick i'm going to read you his bio from the original g1 double dealer function mercenary motto the price of victory is never too high a ruthless battle-ready robot for rent, a traitorous backstabber, only loyal to the highest bidder, valued by all, trusted by none. When binary bonded to knock, Double Dealer disguises himself as an Autobot robot. When binary bonded to the bat creature Scar, Double Dealer transforms into a Decepticon Falcon. Armed with intercontinental ballistic missile that can travel 3,000 miles in 30 minutes. Equipped with enough explosives to flatten a mountain range. Uses solid light blaster in robot mode. So that's the original G1 bio for Double Dealer. So let's go ahead and scoot the figure back. Just so you can get and take them all in. And we're going to start this video off by just comparing him with other leader class toys from the War for Cybertron trilogy. Coming up first we have, this is the Siege Ultra Magnus. So you can get a scale. If you have Magnus, you can see Double Dealer's a little bit smaller, but he's about as wide. But he does, he's not as hefty as Ultra Magnus. Take in mind that Magnus does not have any of his weapons on him, just the missiles on his arms. He weighs 344 grams. Now Double Dealer, with just his missile weapons taken apart, not his added on guns and back wings, weighs 248 grams. Now, taking the original G1 toy with the same weapons, just the missile taking part, but he does have knock embedded in his abdomen. The G1 toy only weighs 240 grams. So, the Earthrise Double Dealer, with one less accessory piece being knock, actually weighs more than the original G1 toy. So, for people who are all about the weight of a figure or the heft of a figure, this figure here is more weighty than your original G1 Double Dealer would be. Now let's take a look at the accessories that Earthrise Double Dealer comes with. Alright, so we get this accessory here. I'm not even too sure what this piece actually is supposed to be, but it's there. And you have these things which peg on parts, which could be, uh, I guess, missiles that he fires from these things. Or it could be just ammo holders, cartridges. The instructions don't tell you, so you can use your imagination. Also comes with this little bitty black... It's like a machine gun, Gatling gun kind of thing, which he can wield in his hand as a gun. Which actually, it pegs a little bit better than some things do. Or it can go on his shoulders. He has lots of peg 
place this. You can put this here. This thing's meant to go on one of the other holes. And you have this here that pegs in this hole. Then in robot mode, it shows these things here down on the bottom of his legs. Like that. And then he also comes with this piece here, which will be what the support system, the stability system when he's in his missile carrier mode and he wants to fire the missile. So you, this right here also stores on the robot. It stores on the back side here. This here has two uh, slots down here by this peg hole. And this right here has these two pieces here. Now the thing it wants you to do, it wants you to take this piece here at this hinge, but not bend it this way. They want you to bend it this way the problem with that usually sometimes is it wants to pop off easily so let's be aware i've been messing with it so much now that i forcefully push it towards this piece when i turn it to try to keep this stuff on see it doesn't want to turn there we go but just be aware this piece can pop off but it easily just snaps right back on so now you have these two pieces here you want to take it and just snaps underneath like that then you have these pieces here which you can do they are on a ball joint so you can keep them out you can fold them down however you want to do that and there is double dealer with all his weapons that he comes with and accessories uh, this right here of course is the missile it comes in two parts it just snaps together see it's got this little slot here there is this little tab and it just tabs together like this and this here is one of the things that helps keep it on in certain places and also has pegs that it will use as well. And this comes apart. And this right here becomes another gun. I wish the peg was a little bit longer because this piece here is kind of bigger down here. Is that when you put it in his hand, it just hits his forearm really early. So it's really easy to kind of knock out. So just, just watch out for that. This, it doesn't stand very well either. Hey, you can always hold a smaller gun, but this looks more menacing having the bigger weapon in his hand. Problems. Let's go to Q's. On a quality control problem, Q's problem has for is his elbows. He actually has double jointed elbows. There's a joint up here, and he's got a joint down here. I'm, I'm right handed, so I like to put guns in the right hand. So when I first got him out of the package, I put this in his right hand. And then I went to raise his right hand. Raise his right hand. Raise. Uh, it doesn't stay. This joint up here, which is pinned through, is very, very loose. It does not hold anything. So that can be fixed and solved. I just, for 50 bucks, which, you know, I feel out of the package, I shouldn't have to solve problems with a toy. But it happens. But he does have this other joint down here. So what you can do is bend his elbow there. So I took the gun right out of his hand. And it will hold the weapon. So you can kind of finesse this and kind of bring this back. This actually can set back like this and then you can hold it like that as well so it's not no it's doable it's solvable it's just a problem i wish did not exist the only other kind of problems you see his waist wants to go back he's got soft ratchets in his hips so i believe that's the only ratchets he has that i've actually felt nothing else feels ratcheted um but they're very soft i kind of wish they weren't because i mean even Siege Leader Class Shockwave had a lot better ratchet system. I don't know why he, Double Dealer, does not have that. He's a bigger figure, a little more weight. He's kind of weighty up top. Most of his weight is towards the top of this robot. The legs are very hollow on the inside and very light. So he's very much weighted to the top. So <laughs> you have to pop him just right in the hips. But he's still an impressive looking figure. As that's one quality thing. I wish the ratchets were a hard ratchet or a tighter a better ratchet than what he has, not a soft ratchet. Alright, alright, comparison time. Let's compare Earthrise Double Dealer with the original G1 Double Dealer. Bam, there you go. Uh Earthrise is still very impressive. Like I said, it actually weighs more than the original G1 Double Dealer. Now the original G1 toy, it measures about 8 inches tall to the top of the head. To the top of the head of the Earthrise is about 7 and a quarter inches. So G1 is about 3 quarters inches taller. He looks bigger because the missile goes even higher. 
No overall comparisons. They're very similar. If you move this other way, you can see he's got the red for the windows. And they transform very similar as well. It is a very good update to the original G1 toy. But the ratchets on this guy are good. Not much articulation, but what you got in the ratchets are really, really good. Now, I like the head update on the Earthrise. I just think that's more menacing. And I wish his red eyes stood out more. But they're not buggy like they were on the G1 toy. And when I was a kid, I looked at the G1 head. I always thought Mickey Mouse, because it looked like Mickey Mouse ears. Just not cyclone outwards, they went to the back. That's just because it looks for looks when the missile sits in there. Turn around to the back side. Uh, but it is a really good update to the G1 figure. And of course, the chest piece here is sort of more like sound wave. It just opens up. And you can store knock or scar inside of it. I'll put them that way. Close it back up. These two tabs here just lock right into there. And he's hidden. Now, knock on G1 is right there in his abdomen. But on the Earthrise, they have actually molded in what looks to be knock. So it's there, even if it's not. More comparisons, here he is next to Siege Netflix Megatron, Leader Class Astro Train, Earthrise Thundercracker, and next to Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus. Alright, so articulation on Double Dealer. He's got 360 shoulders, you also can move him out to here. He's got an upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, he's got a joint there, and you can bring it up to there. He does have waist articulation, you can 360 him. All the way around. I guess that's soft ratcheted hips to the front, to the back. Kick out. Come through the full splits. Knee bends to there. And ankle tilts to there. Also, the head can slightly move up and slightly move down very, very, very little. Uh, you cannot 360 around because you hit this back piece, so you get to there to look each way, depending on which side of the missile is on. Knocking there for right now, and of course on his shoulders, he comes with the uh, Autobot logos in the package like this. But if you want him to have Decepticon in the bot mode, maybe you know he's like, "I'm working for you now," and he will flip them down. You just have to get underneath this little piece here, and it just flips over. And then you have Decepticon logos. Or he can be split personality. Uh, I do both at the same time. All right, so let's get the transforming double dealer into his hawk mode. First thing you want to do is remove all his bits and pieces, all the kibble. It includes this missile up top, which I like to leave because I like the look of the missile on the shoulder. It just makes him look more menacing. Uh, go ahead and flip down this other Decepticon logo as well. Let's get that down like so. Grab him by his back. The whole green pieces here. Pull this out. Comes to the front. Like this straighten his arms up to back here to these tires this will come down like so then bring his little bird feet out same on the other side then you want to fold his hands up into the cavity in the bottom of his forearm then you want to bring this on this double joint there is a peg or tab right here and there is a slot back here that you will want to meet into that. So we just want to bring that up and then we want to tab it together. Like that. And just do the same on the other side. There we go. And I come down here to the bottom. He has like a heel spur kind of piece. It just comes all the way out like this. Flip them to the back side here. You want to then bring these around to where these are on the sides like this then take them at this piece here you want to pull his knees down so what i want you to do is they want you to get this little black tab they kind of set in this little gap right there and i've done the best i can here it's just a tab but i cannot actually get that to really tab in on mine it just kind of just rest right there so we're just going to just gotta get that little black tab piece all the way over to that gap it's really hard to show on camera i'll zoom in a little bit and so you can try to see it a little bit better but he's just got so much in the way going on and it's just got to get into that little gap and see it's pretty much a butt there 
then you gotta bring then you bring his legs back around to the front and you have these tabs and you have to tab those together see I don't have it exactly right you see how these are done this way see how the tabs not there we have to work that up even higher there we go see now it's up in there pieces are now tab in now they want you to take this piece here you bring this up take this piece here that has knock in it they want you to bring this down and this piece now will come back around onto this piece piece onto this tab like this it's on the hinge it, it just hinges up and then it catches onto this little tab piece of course you can take knock out if you desire that let's get him out of the way Next thing you want to do is flip around to the back side and bring this stuff out of your way. We want to bring his wings out. So this will now open up. Bring this one out. This purple panel will come out. You can see the bird head in there. We want to bring this around like so. And Billy's head will now pass through into this cavity. Close this back down. Tab will just go back in the slot. Locks the bird head in. Turn it this way, and it's on the hinge here. You want to hinge this off of the black forward like this. And yes, the mouth does open and close. Getting the wings now to just come out. And there's a piece here that folds out. And bring these out. Then you'll take his arms, and they will just fold in to the body. And just bring it down. Go ahead and put him down, and we gotta get his missile ready to put onto the Falcon. Grab both parts of your missile, like I showed earlier. Tab them together. So after putting the missile together, it has these little black uh, tabs that will just tab around this front little section here. Now, in the old G1 toy is actually stored underneath the bird and look kind of suggestive. Uh, you can still do that. Instead, they want you to actually just hook it on to the back at the top of the bird instead of being so suggestive with it. They want you to peg this big peg here in the, into the back part here. And then this black peg uh, tabs will still tab into the back. So let's go ahead and tab that on. So we just fit it over the front set here. It catches on. Fold these pieces down. And you can fold the back of this down, but when you do so, it will untab or unpeg from the missile. Now the missile will stay there because it's hooked to the actual bird. But this piece here can now fall out. So if you don't want that to fall out, you can just leave a tab. But then you have this little unsightly butthole gap. So you just want to go ahead and close that up. And there you go. He is in his falcon mode. And then you take all his other little pieces and you can peg them to all the available spots on the bird. Um, they have this and the gun, the little black Gatling gun going down in the fists that are exposed. And these side pieces pegging into the sides of the bird. Uh, I don't really have to do that. That's just some things you can do. You don't have to do it. And then you got articulation in the falcon mode. Of course, you have in the wings. You got hinges here, which are ratcheted. And you have hinges here, which can move. And of course, you have these tips, which can go down like that. And then you have the little feet, which can move this way. And then the head can move. All the way around a little up and down and then the mouth actually opens up as well so you do have some movement there look at the actual bird face not bad sculpting down the side of the butt around to the back side i just i feel that this is kind of janky in the back underside and you can still store knock or a scar in there. but So he's in this mode. He's supposed to have a scar on him. He's supposed to be the power master that powers the Falcon mode. Now let's compare this Falcon one to the G1 version. And there's Earthrise with the G1 double dealer. Of course G1. You, you can still store this missile on top in G1. You, they hook together. That'd just be you know, right over the head there. But you know he's just. He's seen RC a few too many times. So he's just a little excited. That's all. But otherwise, I mean, they're about the same size. Um, I actually want to say that Earthrise might be a little bit longer. Well, G1 has a bigger head. Uh, the wings, 
Definitely give the nod to Earthrise with the articulation on the wings. These just have these little weird hinges and you can go up and down. Uh, just the movement on this one. He feels more stable in bird mode. The wings are more impressive on the Earthrise. I just think overall he's just a little more impressive. Uh, they're both just a jumbled mess, honestly. But I just think I prefer their look on the Earthrise over the original G1 uh, double dealer. Now let's get him into his missile carrier mode. All right, so to transform Double Dealer into his Missile Carry mode, I've got him back to where I pretty much had him. You have him normal. I have his fist folded into the back, and then the bottom, bottom of his foot pulled out. And that's as far as I've gone with him and from robot mode to this. I also removed all of, the, all of his accessories. But I believe in this mode, you don't have to have him down. You, you can have uh, the Autobot logo up for this one. Uh, the bird mode they want you to have the Decepticon down for the Falcon. You, know, you can't even see it, but, but in this one, you can have the Autobot one down. Now let's get him going into his robe, his uh, missile carry mode. Just take his legs. It's going to be very similar. You want to take these and pull them out like this. Then you want to fold his legs up like so. There's this big tab here. And on the side, you see these little slots. It's going to go into one of those slots back there. But we're going to do that with both his legs. And you see how you're going to tab them together like you did in the Falcon mode. Except that with this mode, you're also going to tab them onto his hips as well. If I'm mistaken, it is the top slot on his leg. You want to work those into. Okay. There we go. Take a chest piece, bring it down. You can see there are these little slots right here. Take this, spin it around your two tabs. This is now going to tap in the legs. Now you want to rotate him at the bicep swivel to where is the back of his form so you can see his hands are facing up. Then you want to turn him back this way. There's a tab back here, a slot right here. And you're just going to make those meet and tab into each other. Get down to the other. Now you want to take his arms, just his arms, they will separate from the piece with the wheels. You want to bring this up to his chest. Okay, I'm not, no, I'm not. I want the whole piece. Yeah, you see these tabs here, they don't hold very well. My hands there, bring that up. That again, you can turn around this way. This piece here is going to come up over his head. Hold that up, like so down here on the wings, make sure this purple piece is folded under like this so you get some clearance. So now you want to have his missile together, like I showed you before, how they just snap together. Turn this around into the two peg holes, the two pegs, you will just line up and peg together. Now you just want to push it down. The instructions tell you to take these little pieces here. They want you to tab them in on the sides of the arms. Now, like I said, these are just extra pieces. If you don't want to lose them, it's probably good idea to always tab them onto the piece. Um, you don't have to. I really don't like to peg on this one. Tab. I don't want to say tabbed in very well. Take this piece here. I mean, it's whichever tab, I mean, slot you want to put them in. And there's another gun there. Now the back piece here for the supports, what you want to do is you want the wing part to be facing up. You see on the back he's got two peg holes. So there's two pegs, so you want the tab piece facing down. Tab them in. Fold that piece up. And fold these up for right now because you're not using them to support them. And you're done transforming him into the missile carrier mode. Over on the mode, he looks fine. I don't really see any problems just looking at the figure. It looks very nice. It's very hefty when you got them all compact this way. The biggest problem I have is just having the figure want to roll. Um, it's just so much of the wings underneath it. It's sort of the wheels, I wish were bigger. That's one of the, my biggest complaints, maybe. These need to be bigger, but they're small on the original G1 too. But it's just it's not enough clearing clearance 
for his wings down here. But if you want to fire the missile, you want to do is take these out, spin around like this, bring this piece down. You see it's got the parts here, so it's a ramp system, so you can connect sound barriers, or you can connect them with hoist, Omega Supreme, Ironworks, Grease Pit, all of them. And then you just bring this up, and there's your missile. And it falls off. I told you, these pegs don't hold very well. He's really trying to overcompensate, but it can hold different angles of a pose here. So it's cool. So it's a good update, like I said, of the original G1 toy. I do like it a lot. Now let's do a quick comparison with the original G1 Double Dealer. Alright, there we go. A little bit closer in because these aren't as big or as wide as the birds or the wings, the falcons or the wings. As you can see, the Earthrise is a lot bigger than the original G1 in this mode. You can almost hide the G1 behind it. You don't only know he's there because of the big huge ass missile sitting on top of the vehicle. Otherwise, you know, he's pretty much hidden by this newer figure from Earthrise. But it's, like I said, they're very close to each other. They transform very similar. It's just Earthrise, you do more stuff. There's more littler pieces that have to move. And it, just, it feels more fiddly, uh, not as sturdy. But the G1, it, you know, it's you get less articulation, less stuff going on overall. But it is a lot smaller. You know, the G1 is a lot smaller than... The Earthrise. And Earthrise, I think from the back view, looks, looks a lot better than what we got in G1. Front view, pretty similar. It's just kind of gappy underneath here. You, know, you put your whole finger or a MicroMaster course gets stuck under there. At least these where he folded his legs looks like front vents to a vehicle. Now, of course, if you, if you bought that uh, last pack from Hasbro Pulse and other online shops that had um, more of the sets for Soundwave, it also had Scar and Knock, and they belong with Double Dealer. Uh, you don't get them with Double Dealer, which I think, you know, they should have just came with this guy. I think that would have been an overall uh, better package, better deal, paying 50 bucks. You're just getting this. I think if he came, he should have just came with these guys. In my opinion, I think that would have been the right way to go. Because, you know, these guys are small, and they don't weigh anything, and it wouldn't cost... I think it would have been the same. Just cut out on some of these little pieces, like this piece here, and these little side pieces. They're not really needed. Uh, you can keep the smaller gun, because that gives you options. Keep the big missile. Keep the stability support system, which adds some coverage to hide certain things in different modes. Uh, just keep... You know, and then he should have came with these guys, I think. That's just my opinion, and how I feel, because... Uh, 50 bucks nowadays, you're not getting very much. No, he should have came with his partners. That's just my opinion. Just my opinion. So, overall thoughts on Earthrise Double Dealer. One, I'm sorry for the long review, but he's got a lot going on. Uh, so, overall, he's a really nice update to the G1 figure. He's not as tall in robot mode, but he's as heavy. His vehicle modes... His vehicle mode is bigger. His bird mode is more impressive, in my opinion. The wings can do more. He's more expressive. Uh, he does have a few QC problems I would want to fix. Uh, that right elbow, it could just be my copy. I wish he had hard ratchets, not soft ratchets. Uh, and that's really... And the tabs, of course, don't really tab in very well in certain parts. I had that complaint a lot over the Transformers, especially the Studio Series Transformers from Hasbro. Uh, other thing is the missile itself. I wish the pegs... Or a little bit longer, when so it wouldn't be so loose. It would stay more sturdy into each thing. Uh, it wouldn't be as easily knocked out and when he's holding it as a gun. And that's probably really my only complaints overall on the figure. Uh, the, the tires could, the wheels could be a, a tad bit bigger, so he can give him more clearance to get off the ground because he's dragging a lot of crap down here that uh, doesn't fold up very flat and neat. Uh, you need some clearance on that. Anyway, like I said, excellent looking figure, a nice figure overall, and one I'm happy to have in my collection. It, I also, the other red eyes, I wish they were a little bit more, uh, you could see them. They're too squinty. I guess he's supposed to be squinty because he's a traitor. But he, I just kind of wish they were more expressive, but I like this head better, a lot better than that G1 head. I want to say thanks for watching this long window review. I want to say thank you for 2,500 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Thanks for following me. Don't forget to click subscribe to the bell notification icon. Thumbs up if you like the video. Also, if you want to support the channel, I got an Amazon storefront link in the description below. It'll help support the channel if you buy stuff through that uh, storefront. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next one, peace out.